Hey class, this is Miss Broin. I bet you guys are having super a lot of fun doing your math homework and studying right now. Um, this video is going to go over learning targets 7.0, simplifying radicals, and 7.1, set up and solve with the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to start with simplifying radicals. So the main thing you need to keep in mind when simplifying radicals are our perfect squares, which are 4, 9, 16 and 25. There are more, but we should just need these for now. So we want to split up our radical so that it includes one of these perfect squares. So 75, we're going to do 25 because that's our biggest square that will go into 75. So we'll split it up of the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, which leaves us with 5 square roots of 3. Next, we'll do the square root of 90, and we can see that 9 goes into there evenly. And so we'll split it up as the square root of 9 times the square root of 10, which is equal to 3 square roots of 10. 132, it's not as easy to see, but we'll start by dividing it into um, with our smallest square, which it does go into evenly. So we'll have the square root of 4 times the square root of 33, which leaves us with 2 square roots of 33. This can't be simplified any farther because it has no perfect squares in it that can be divided evenly into it. So this is our final answer. Next we'll go over solving for the Pythagorean theorem. So for this problem we're going to let 10 equal a and 15 equal b. They could be vice versa as long as a and b are equal to your legs and c is equal to your hypotenuse. So plugging in the numbers into our equation, we have 10 squared plus 15 squared equals x squared. Now we just need to solve for x. So we have 100 plus 225 is equal to x squared. Adding them together, we have 325 is equal to x squared. And then we need to take the square root of both sides and that leaves us with a square root of 325 equals x. But 325 can be divided, um, made more simple. We can see that we can divide it by 25, so we'll have the square root of 25 times the square root of 13, which leaves us with 5 square roots of 13. You just have to find that perfect square that goes into your number. Next, we will try solving for a leg instead of the hypotenuse. So let's let x equal a, square root of 8 equal b, and square root of 18 equals c. Plugging this into our equation, we have x squared equal, er, sorry, plus square root of 8 squared is equal to the square root of 18 squared. Now if you square a square root, they cancel out. They're no longer there. So that leaves us with x squared plus 8 equals 18. Subtract 8 from both sides and we have x squared equals 10. Now we need to square root both sides and we have x equals the square root of 10. And that is as simple as we can get it. We'll try one more solving for the hypotenuse. Let's let square root of 10 equal a square root of 19 equal b, and x equals c. Then we will have, plugging these into our equation, we have the square root of 10 squared plus the square root of 9 squared equals x squared. These cancel out, and we're left with 10 plus 19 equals x squared. Adding, er, not 19, sorry guys, plus 9. 10 plus 9 is 19 equals x squared. We need to square root both sides and we have the square root of 19 is equal to x. Now we'll work with our Pythagorean triples. So the easiest way to learn these is just to memorize them. It just can make things simpler if you have them memorized, but you don't really need them. You can just use the Pythagorean theorem. But the, they are 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, and 7, 24, 25. So how, 
we are given two sides of a right triangle. All three side lengths of the triangle are integers and together form a Pythagorean triple. We need to find the length of the third side and tell whether it is a leg or the hypotenuse. So the first thing you want to do is find all the divisors of the smallest number. So we have 1, 2, 4, 7, 14, and 28. So we want to first try to divide by our largest number, but we, we don't really need to do the number itself because the number 1 isn't included in any of our Pythagorean triples. So we'll start with 14. 14 does not go into 96 evenly, so that's not going to be our greatest common divisor. 7 does not go into 96 evenly, so that won't be our greatest common divisor. And I'm just checking these with my calculator. And then 4 does actually go into 96 evenly. So we'll divide both our numbers by 4, and we'll get 7 and 24. Just given those two numbers, we can see that it'll match up with this triple, and our missing number is 25. To get the number that would go with these numbers, we'd have to multiply it by 4, which would give us 100. And we can see that this will be the longest leg of our triangle, so it will be the hypotenuse. And that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys are having a good night or weekend, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.